There's nothing like League. And this is the Betfred Super League. again everyone and thank you for tuning our way again for this very special edition of Eddie and Steve-O the podcast. So that was arguably the greatest Wembley Challenge Cup final of the summer era. Lee beating Hulkingston Rovers in golden point extra time in the most dramatic of circumstances. 52 years on from the last victory at Wembley Lee did themselves proud with a win that appeared to be born in the stars. So what does it mean to the town? What does it mean to the club, the coaches, the players? And of course, the man who supports, runs, finances the club and someone who has always believed that the furry story was possible. I'm referring, of course, to Derek Beaumont, the man who has transformed the Lee Leopards into a fighting fund in rugby league over the past 12 months and who now are Challenge Cup holders for the first time since 1971. Derek a whirlwind of a weekend for you, I'm sure. Are you back to earth yet? I feel like I've just been on the longest parachute jump <laughs> in history. Incredible. Um, you know, the, the game itself was just the hardest game of rugby I've ever watched. Uh, it, it was horrible. <laughs> it was. It was horrible. Um, well, it was for you, but it wasn't for those of us watching from outside the neutrals. It was tremendous. Uh, it's great for the game, yeah. great for the sport. And actually, looking back on it now, you've won it. What a way to win it. Um, and I feel so sad for OKR as well. Um, as well, and I, and I thought about that. You know, as much as I was running around like a madman uh, celebrating, and we all were, you kind of have a moment where you think, as if you feel like you're jumping on someone's grave and you shouldn't do, you know what I mean? Because you look round and you, and, and you see some people there on their knees and they're desperate. And, I, and then I think to myself, geez, they've probably put into it everything we have, I'm sure, you know, all the build-up, all the special things that we did, the shirt presentations, the meetings, so on and so on. They'll have done exactly the same as that. And now deflating, um, you know. So that, 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 was, that was like an emotion running through me as, uh, as we was going to walk up, up the steps. But I thought, you know, that they were great. They were, you know, they were magnanimous in defeat. And so were the fans as well. I just want to get that out there because I, I thought that was pretty classy. Was there ever a moment on Saturday that you thought, we're not going to do this after all? Mate, so, listen, nobody knows this other than inside at this point, right? So... I'm up there with Dukes, you know, when we're in here in, in, in my box here and the game's done and we've won, a couple of minutes to go, we're down the stairs and, and we're there at the side so we can celebrate it, you know, with, with the boys. So this is a bit the biggest occasion ever in, in, in my life, uh, you know, to, especially to do with rugby, outside of like my kids being born and, and getting married to Laura. And I want to be there at pitch side. Now... You can't go there until you know it's won, and it ain't won until the whistle's gone, but it's going to take time to get there, so you've got to go through a... There's a little bit of a private way that I'm akin to because Laura presents the 1895 and goes down, so I know where this little elevator is they use for the royals and stuff. <laughs> and uh, I'd used it earlier in the day to, to take some buttonholes down and, and bring some bottles up that I had to give to uh, old KR and Halifax and, uh, and Butler. And uh, I said to Neil, come on, mate. And, and he's like, we can't go yet, mate. It's only six points. So I know it, it, there was about three minutes left. And, and we're down. We're, we're, we're Aaron, I was like, mate, th these guys ain't going. You know, they've scored that one try where, where the kick's not gone and we've not been set and we're not, you know, we're not where we should be. They haven't done anything since. They, 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 they're just coming more one up. They're not throwing shapes. So there's no way they're going length for the field on us, right? They're going to get one more set with the ball. We've got to go or we're not going to be there. So I'm going. He went, right, I'm coming. 
because we grabbed our kids because we got accreditation for them to come with us. They always do. I can see what's coming. Mate, seriously. So we're in the lift, right? We're in the lift. We're six points up. There's, there's less than three minutes to go. And Dukesy pinches me and he says, Dexy, we've just won the Challenge Cup. Can you believe it? And I was like, wow, right? And as the doors open on this lift and, and, and then there's a little corridor and then you're in the tunnel, right? And as we, as we open, as the doors open on the lift, I hear this roar and like I'm running, running down the tunnel and I know it's coming from the wrong end because it's the side we are. And I was like, runs down and, and, I, and, I, and I look and as I got there, he's gone like this, Chris Kendall. The, the, try. The, tri the, the try signal up for the video right? yeah and I'm watching it and I'm watching it and I'm watching it and I, I, I don't know how long it went on for but I four swore minutes. was it four minutes it felt like, it just felt like ages but I felt like a prat <laughs> because I'm like what the hell am I doing study you know because you know what I mean yeah. and I went Jukes we might not have won the challenge cut you cursed it like and he's like and he just fired off away from me probably thought <laughs> I'm better being away from this guy and sat at the back of the dugouts and I'm stood there and I was trying to influence the decision by thinking, if anyone's watching me, I need to react by cheering to show as, he's, as if he's knocked on. And you know, I spoke to Liam after it. Um, and, and, you know, he's made the right call. He's gone with the live call, whether there should be one of them or not. You know, I think if you're going to the screen, mm. it's because you're not sure. So why should you make a decision on it? It should just be open to that interpretation. Because then I think it puts pressure on the video ref. But, Absolutely, it does. Um, you know, but I thought, I thought Liam got it right, just like I thought uh, in the, um, you know, the semi when he doesn't give the, the try. I thought he got that right. It's, it's a knock on. So um, one's worked for us, one, one's not. And then, I knew we would kick it because of where it was. So I'm like, oh, my actual Lord, where can I go? Because I, I shouldn't be here. And I'm going to look like the biggest fool of all, you know, and everybody can't wait to give it to me, you know what I mean, when it don't work out. And all these processes are going through my mind and, and, I, and I think I just sat down on the front row of the dugouts and I looked, Lammy's gone up to the back. Um, and I'm thinking, why is no one going on, on, on the field? And it took me back to a moment in 2004 at Widnes. We were 16 all with Whitehaven and I'd invested everything into getting into Super League. And it was 16 all. And really, Whitehaven ought to have, have, have won that game, to be told. Um, Tommy Martin could come up with a marvellous thing and kept the player on him when he, he tackled him. They were stacked up to do us with nobody back. And he said, Don't move, don't move, I'm done, I'm done. And, and the kid never got off him. And then as soon as we were back, he went, Cheers, mate. And the guy's head, head falls off and, and we're all set. So I, I'm, I'm looking and I'm thinking, damn, it's 16, I need to do something. Somebody needs to be saying something. I didn't know back then or, or now. Coaches aren't allowed to go on and speak to the... They're not allowed on the field at that point before extra time. Um, so I went on the field in, in uh, Witness. And as I got to about a metre from the players, I could see Paul Rowley giving it you know, whatever, and I thought, it's not a place for me. And I shot back, you know, I thought, not, nothing he's saying for me. And I, and I kind of felt like that at this this moment, and I was thinking about that. And then the players kind of came to the side um, where Lammy could sort of speak to them. Um, and, and, and at that moment, when he did, I thought, we'll win this. We'll win it, just chill out. You were that confident then? I, I just thought, when I, when I saw how he looked, he just got that presence. And I could see how, how the guys were looking and, and into him and he was smiling. He was probably nervous as hell, um, but he was smiling at them. And, you know, uh, and I just thought, it's how it's, it, you know, the serendipity, it's, it, it's, it's our moment. It's just got to be this painful way. Let me pick you up on the serendipity word, because in your post-match interview, that was the first word you used. It is serendipity. Now, I've looked it up in the, in the dictionary. Actually, no, I've Googled it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it means... The occurrence and development of an event by chance in a happy and beneficial way. Good luck in finding things unintentionally. A reference to fairy tale characters who are always making discoveries through chance. You're not telling me, on all the people listening to this, that to win this Challenge Cup was done by chance, are you? No, so it, it, it does mean that, Eddie. Um, but it, 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 it's, it's also like a, a, a kin really like to sort of like fate, like everything happening for a reason. Like it's just our time. So we focused everything. 
Mike, who's sat here with us, um, we did a presentation before. I've never ever done a PowerPoint presentation to a group of lads. That is not what I do. And it started with an image of a fierce leopard. And, and I spoke about how, you know, the logo is a playing thing. And, and the first start of the season was just a, a, the leopard's face like it's not snarling. It's just a leopard. Cute looking, looking elegant. And I said, you see that leopard there now that you see? That's now the leopard that you've become. That's what teams now when they play us see. They see a fierce leopard. They see something like, geez, we've got to go there. And that's what we've become. And we, and, and we built this story and we showed 21, we showed 71. Mike spoke about all the history. Um, and, 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 it, and it was massive. And the thing was always, my dream was always that it would be, we'd done it in 21, we did it in 71. I wanted to do it in 21. Uh, desperately wanted to do it in 21. But we had COVID and it took two years out of everybody's life. And that's how my presentation to the boys ended, right. was it's 2021, guys, because two seasons haven't really been. That word I only heard on the day before, and this is all part of the serendipity. So I only hear that word the day before at the Cenotaph. I've come out of the House of Commons, I'm walking to the Cenotaph, and a guy comes up to me, who, uh, I think he's the president of... Uh, of Leeds Rhinos. I just thought about something. He said, you guys won it in 21. You won it in 71. And if you take away COVID, what took two years of everyone's life, it's actually 2021, isn't it? Like, it could be your time. <laughs> and I went, have you been talking to Mike Latham in there? And he went, no, why? I said, because that's exactly what we've built this whole thing around. And he went, no way. And before we get to doing the, the actual wreath, he comes over to me and he says, the word serendipity, that's to, that describes what, it, what this is, the 21 cents and the old COVID and you guys being here, serendipity. So I did what you did Looked and I Googled up. it. And I thought, hey, do you know what? That's it, that, that, that's, that's, that's the word I'm gonna use. And I don't think long and hard or I never write a speech down or anything like that. And I don't, I don't plan, I speak from me, me emotion. Yeah. So, so my thing was, you know, there's two types of opportunities. There's the opportunities that present themselves to you. And then there's the opportunities that you create for yourself. This is one you've created for yourselves. You've worked incredibly hard and we've seen everything you've put into it. But guys, let me tell you, Serendipity won't win the Challenge Cup. <laughs> only, you've got to do it. Only you will. Only you will. <laughs> you've got to do it. It might play its part, but you've got to do what yeah, you've got to do. And they all burst out laughing, of course, and it, it just released the, the tension. But, but in the end, you know, the, the, the rugby gods, if you look over it, the kick of Makinson, it looks like it's going, it curves away. Yeah. You know, we miss one, they miss one, we get one. And you look at Zach Hardacre's four tackles he makes on the run to stop them making metres to get to a kick so the kick can't make it and then we get you, you know the chance back the kick a penalty it doesn't go out at that moment I thought it's, it's not ours it's theirs if that penalty goes into touch they play their plays they get there and Snyder can kick the goal um, and it was Snyder who missed the touch yeah exactly so, fate, fate yeah, yeah, it's, all, it's, it's all it's all there it's in, in the rugby gods and when we got there on the warm up after being at the cenotaph after being told about serendipity as I walk through the tunnel I thought I'm going left, and I'm going to the t t to the uh, try line where I think the first try is going to be scored. That's what I'm going to do. And when I got there, and there was a feather, white feather, and they've been feather. around me all the time since me old man died. A lot of people believing that kind of thing, and my grandma at the same time, one flew down right right there while we were stood there outside the car. Home. This feather's here. And then on game day, the first try was exactly that. You can't well, make it up, man. It's, you can't, it's there. Yeah. We've got the video that shows where we went, and that's where the first try went and got scored, albeit by OKR. Well, serendipity played a hand. There's no, <coughs> there's no doubt about that. OK, look, the dust is now settled. You've won it. You slept with it, the cup. <laughs> um, how do you feel, personally, now? Because start of the season, people said, oh, Lee Leopards, never going to work. You've proved a lot of people wrong, Derek. You, you know, you've, you've backed it with your own money for a start. You've brought in players that people maybe said weren't worth it. And look what they've done for you. How do you feel now yourself? Well, I, I just feel immensely proud. Um, but it is about the players and, and, and Lammy and, and Chesy and all the staff. Um, because, you know, the rebrand's been successful because of what they've done on the pitch. 
you know, it, it is, t- trust me. Mm. I'm not just saying that to, mm. you know, take it away from me. I, I'll, I'll acknowledge and, and take pleasure and pride in, in what I've done. And the lads just spoke very highly about it over there in, in, in our emo- really emotional meeting that parks this up before we move forward. Um, so, I, you know, I'll take credit for those bits, but it's the players that do it and, and it's the coaches that do it. And I see the effort and dedication, determination and commitment that they put into it for each other. It's an unbelievable group, Eddie. Mm. It's an unbelievable group. And Lamb is an unbelievable man. Like how he leads and, and, and what he does, it's just, it's next, it is next level, I'm telling you. You know, it, it, it's, I've, I've no disrespect to other coaches I've worked with. It's just different, massively. So these players that people say, you know, I just mentioned over there in quite detail about Zach Ardacre because, like myself, he's a bit out there and, and, and he, he comes in for a lot of criticism. And he, he's, he's a special, he's the most competitive person I've ever come across. And you watch that, you just watch that last play, what Catalan have, that set they have, where they, where they don't get the kick because they're too far out, he tries it, he's got to. You just watch what Zach Ardacre does in there because he makes four consecutive tackles. It's unbelievable. It's like he's prepared to do it on himself, and and that's not taking anything away from the rest of the lads. But you've you've got you know Charlie who's who's so called spent. You know what you're doing with him. He's he's passed it. He wasn't getting in our team in the championship in the year before. He's got his pre-season worked hard. He's he's, he's second in the try scoring list. He, you know he was he was top at, at one point, and he, he's close to it. He's one try away from. Uh, equaling the all-time try record in a season here by John Woods in the, that uh, famous 81-82 season, you know. But the reason all these players that everybody's kind of wrote off uh, are doing so well is because of Adrian Lamb and because of how you know he's resurrected them and and, and how they're all playing together and, and becoming the best version of themselves. That's what he's making them all do, and together. No, it's just grown. And what our objectives were at the beginning, they're becoming different mm. and they're becoming changing and we're believing in what we're doing because it ain't by chance and it ain't by serendipity. No. It's by damn hard work and determination and turning up for each other over and over and over again and being prepared to put your body in places when you can't. And, and it's, it's magnificent and they deserve all the credit. They do, but you, with respect, you do yourself because you've been through the bad times also into Super League, couldn't keep in there. The fans, one or two of them, turned against you. Do you feel like now you just look everybody in the eye and said, I told you so? <laughs> um, do you know what? I'm not that kind of... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm genuinely not that kind of guy, you know what I mean? I, 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 I never... Um, there's a bit of indication in there, I suppose. I mean, I, the word I only... It's just pride. You know, when you see what it's done for the town... And, and, and Mike told me he took the cup to his mum, who's 97, uh, last night after he'd done the, the TV with it. Who'd seen it in, in 1971. I just, it broke me. Wow. You know, I, I just burst into tears. I've never seen so many tears, but to see so many people crying when we came back with that trophy, and the amount of people that turned out in the town just blew my head clean off. Like, that, that for me, was it's the right to do the told you so. It's the, it's, the, it's the fans' right to have that moment now on socials and wherever and, you know, look at what little old Lee, you know. No criticism of Dave Woods, I think he's a great commentator and, it, and it, it, it's, it's befitting, it is little old Lee. 45,000 people compared to cities. You know, little old Lee at Wembley. Wonderful. And you, you're referring to... Mike throughout this interview yeah. so far let's let's just bring Mike Latham in he is the the club's historian he's the man who took it to this trophy to see his 97 year old mum what did she think of it when you turned up Mike with the cup well my mum's now got dementia in a home uh, I do the the, uh, the match day in the premier club and I wear a suit and club tie and I always then go and see my mum on the way home and she always says the same thing to me Oh, you're smart for a change, she says. Uh, have, you, have you been to work? And they all say, no, I've been to Lee. And she always says the same thing. Were Alex Murphy and Kevin Ashcroft there? And those memories of 1971 are, are still there. So I went to see her last night. Uh, it was quite late and uh, she was in bed. 
and for the first 20 minutes or so she wasn't quite aware I was there and gradually she sort of came round and I began to speak to her and tell her about the weekend's events and I said I've got something to show you and uh, and she sort of uh, sat up in bed and said look at this I brought this to show you and her whole face just changed into this sort of beaming smile it was uh, an incredible moment and Fantastic. just shows you what it meant to my mum, just what it means to the, the people of Lee. And, and you, you will know that more than anybody, and I can see you're getting very emotional now about, about last night and what happened, and I can understand that completely. But to wait for 52 years, or serendipity 50 years, as, as Derek has been talking to us about it, uh, it is just the most magical moment. I mean, can you, how does it compare, Mike, to, to 71 when it last happened? Well, it's, it's very similar in some regard. We had an inspirational coach, uh, and we had an inspirational number seven. In those days, the, the two were combined. Alex Murphy was the player coach. In 1921, if you want to take it even further back, we had an inspirational captain called Walter Mooney, who also won the, wore the number seven shirt. And he actually worked down a pit in called Jim Pit in Tilsley uh, with my granddad, got uh, showered. I mean, in those days, the miners didn't actually wash the backs because they, it, it, they kept the cold, the pit dirt on them because they felt it made them stronger. So Walter Mooney didn't, he never washed the back of his, he never washed his back ever. And uh, so he played in 21 and the inspirational number seven. Alex Murphy was the inspirational number seven in 71. So it was written in the stars that Lachlan Lam and uh, his father Adrian, both famous number sevens, would be the stars in 2023. Murphy's side was full of people who, were written off by so many people. Peter Smethers, the inspirational loose forward, he'd played for 15 years, never won a medal, been written off by his previous clubs. People like um, Paul Grimes, Derek Watts, uh, the, Stan Dorrington, all all the players were, they were very, very good players, but a lot of them had, had never won anything in their careers, but they had this incredible team spirit, this incredible belief that and I, I spoke to I spoke to virtually every player that played in seventy one. Sadly, six have, have since passed away. But they all told me that common thing that they were convinced because of all sorts of events that they were going to win the cup in seventy one. And when we had that meeting before the Wakefield Cup tie, that that was the defining moment for me. I, I came out of that meeting having seen the room, just felt the energy and the resolve and determination. And I went home to my wife and I said, we're going to win the cup this year. And she said, how many times have I heard you say that? <laughs> how many times have I heard you say that? I said, I'm telling you, I am telling you, we are going to win the cup this year. You want to just see what I've seen today. You want to feel what I've felt. I have never felt anything like it. And I'm not an arrogant or boastful person in any way, but... Throughout the cup run, I've been strangely calm, even the semi-final, even the final. I was strangely calm and serene inside. And I just I just had this feeling we were going to win. And, I mean, it was such a fantastic occasion for the people of Lee because those stories of 71 have been passed down through generations. There were three, four generations who went to that 71 final. And the number of people I've met since who, oh, I went to my granddad with that final. A lady came up to me on uh, the week before and she said, I-, I was 10 years old and I went with my father and my grandfather. She said, no, I'm a grandmother uh, and I'm going with two generations below me. Um, and it- it's just those things that we pass through generations. And I said to Lachlan Lamb afterwards, I said, You've written yourself into folklore, like every single member of this side, that people in a hundred years' time will be recounting your drop goal and what you've achieved. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, D- Dave Woods, to be fair to him, as a, a fellow commentator, summed it up perfectly. He said, Lachlan Lamb, a Lee legend. And he is. And his dad is. Yeah. You know, it, it's not the silence of the Lambs anymore, no, no. Lee, is it? It's the family of Lamb. Yeah, well, I, I, it's funny I used to say that because I, I think it was um, it, which team it was. And I, I, I was saying, I think we'd won player of the month and, and coach of the month. For, uh, we presented it before Magic. They, uh, you know, both of them got it first time in Irish to sort of either and, and to get both at the same time. And I said, if I was coaching against us this week, I'd be saying, I'd be billing it silence of the lambs. Let's go and silence them lambs, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that, that kind of thing. But, it, but you know, the classy thing about it is, and this is how Adrian thinks, right? So we're, we're, we're at, at breakfast, the morning of the game, right? 
And Lammy's, you know, the, the details that we've put in everything, it's incredible. It's a, it's a massive story for, 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 for at the end, really. It, needs to, it probably needs to be made into a film or a documentary or something to do it justice. But he's like, who do you think should bang that drum if we win? Right? You know, he's already thinking that because it's whoever bangs the drum in the changing room, it's a, it, it, it's a big thing. Frank, our kit man, and he's been here for however long. And, you know, it, it was so special for him. I'd give Frank the cup and I said, you take that into the boys because you put everything in the changing rooms. You take everything to the changing rooms, so you're taking that to the changing rooms, mate. You go in there. And then he's gone in and then Lambie's gone, you're beating the drum and you've probably seen the scenes. But as he runs <laughs> over, Frank, he even takes his top off like the lads and whacks that drum. <laughs> and that's just the class of it because that's what rugby league is. You know, it just puts everybody on a level it's just so inclusive and I just thought that was like a real special moment. Fantastic. Look, I hate to bring you back down to earth, but <laughs> you're only as good as your last match. Yeah. You've now got, you're in the top four. Mm -hmm. I know you've got designs on first or second. Mm -hmm. And I know you've got designs on the grand final. Can fate take a hand in this as well? It's, I mean, it's all on. Um, there's some very good sides in there. Um, you know, I said before we played at, at, at Wembley, you know, the Leeds game was massive to us to, to keep that aspiration, you know. You we played we, well that day. You yeah, played and, well that night. And, and they, they had to do that, you know. I thought we played really well for the first 30 minutes against Wigan um, and were probably the better side and then they got those scores before our time and it just went away from us. And, and they're, they're a solid team, aren't they? You know, they're a big game team and they was responding to getting knocked out mm. by OKR. So... The Saints game had took so much out of us, but but we was invested in, in because we want to be in that element of it, and we want to keep those two other things alive. That's why we went so hard at, at Leeds, and that was a hell of a game. It was like a semi final in itself, mm -hmm. and and that told on us a little bit there. And we've got Catalan who are a formidable team at the moment coming here next, and it's hard to back anything up after after that. So so it's tough. And I was a word before, and I said, listen, you know. I'm not getting too above my station here because, you know, we, we've lost to Wigan. We could go to Leeds and lose. We could go to Wembley and lose. And then we've got Catalan next and lose. And all of a sudden, just like it's happened to OKR, just like it's happened to Salford, you, you lose four or five games and you go from second to sixth or seventh. And all of a sudden, what was all that Leopards noise about? They had a day out at Wembley, they're not even made the playoffs. You know what I mean? So yeah. it can quickly change. Um, I think the four... The top four is very realistic now with what fixtures we've got less and other people have to play each other. Um, but, I mean, well, to even think about um, winning it, you know, you, you look at... If we're talking serendipity, mm. right, if serendipity is going to carry on with us and, and, and this force above is, is staying on this journey, then that fixture list, when it was created in the beginning, was also created by serendipity because it puts us up against Wigan in the last game of the season here. Now, it was serendipity, could that be for the League Leader Shield? I think we've got to beat Catalan at the weekend if that's going to be remotely possible. Um, if, if we do, I mean, what if that comes back and, and haunts me, so to speak, and, and that's how, how that's decided in the Battle of the Borough Round 3. Played Salford three times, got beat by him twice, um, win the one that, that matters on the third time. It could be. And you have to create these visions in your mind. It's what I do in business. You know, I create I create something, I process what I want it to be, and then I drive it. I just keep thinking it and thinking it and thinking it to try and make it happen. I'm a big believer that you can force things around like that. Of course, in the end, it will be what the players do on the field that determine whether it happens or not but, but they're ready it's they're a ready dream. for it they're ready they're ready for the dream mm. they're ready for the push yeah yeah they're ready for catalan and everybody's ready to try and stop us doing it um you know and and and, and they will and and the the pressure's so different you know the pressure of survival and trying to stay in super league it's so much different oh. i don't know why on earth the likes of wiggins saints leeds you know who every year 
uh, are up there. I mean, how much pressure's on St. Helens for him? Eamon was sat at the side of me. He I was a coup bomber. And he's like, Derek, don't worry about this. You've got it. And I was like... <laughs> 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 I, but I'd watched him go through them emotionals, you know, when they, they lost to Warrington. And I, I was living every decision, sat directly behind him, thinking, oh, my God, how traumatic it must be. But, you know, they've won that grand final the last four times. The pressure to keep on doing it, it it's just unreal. And we're, we're in a different pressure pot. And it, it, it's... It's nice, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, but I can understand. Well, listen, you're living the dream, and yeah, that's the yeah, most important yeah. thing, the both of you are. Yeah. Um, you know, well done again. Um, thank you for taking the time to talk to me in this special week. Uh, it's always a pleasure, and I know that you have been flat to the board with people demanding your time, asking for your time, and I feel really privileged that you've both come in here today and talked to me as well. Well, Eddie, you deserve that, though, because, you know, when Dukesy gave you a call and just said... Do you fancy doing this video for us? Which was like a real special thing at the time for the club. It was massive for us to try and win that bid. And we put everything into it. You know, you saw the document and the work that we put into that. And Mike, you know, and, and my wife, we, we, we was 24, literally 24 seven, not in stock, because it was a short window. And we just said, we'd got this video. And, and I said, it just needs a voice. It needs, it, needs, it needs a voice with, you know, some presence. Whose voices were, and, and for me, you're the voice of rugby league. You, you'll always oh, be the voice of rugby league. That's so, kind. and you 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 just jumped and say, "I'll do that for you for nothing." You know, you didn't want a fee. You was just like, "No, I'll come and do that because I think what you're doing is great." And, I, and and if I can help you, I will. And you came and you did it. Um, and that, so I'll never forget that because you, you know you do you give back what what people give to you. So I can only I can only thank you. I really can. Thank thanks to nice to the both of you. Really seriously. Uh, but uh, that's it for this very special edition of Eddie and Steve O the podcast. Thanks to Derek and of course to Mike uh, and our regular supporters Bet Fred, whose Challenge Cup now resides in the trophy cabinet, well, he's going to build one, in the trophy <laughs> cabinet at the Lee Sports Village, home of the Lee Leopards, for the next 12 months at least. <laughs>